Villisca, Iowa was a busy town of 2,600 folks in 1912. In that year, the Iowa Touring Atlas called it one of the finest cities in the state, with no less than two dozen trains carrying passengers and freight stopping at the town depot every day. There were hotels, restaurants, theaters, and churches, with over 50 stores in town, all connected by modern roads and concrete sidewalks. You could find anything you needed in Villisca. It was known as a cheerful, wholesome town until June 10th of 1912, that is. That morning, the entire Moore family and two young guests were found murdered, and everything in Villisca was turned on its head. Let's dig into this. Warning, viewer discretion advised. Josiah Moore, known as JB, had married Sarah Montgomery in 1899, and they had moved into a white farmhouse at 508 2nd Street. After working for several years at the Jones Hardware and Implement store in town, JB had opened up the Moore Implement Company sometime around 1908, reportedly taking a John Deere dealership contract with him. JB and Sarah were well-liked, respected, and active members of the Velisca community, and the store was quite successful. They were also active members of the Protestant Church just a few blocks from their home. By 1912, J.B. was 43 years old, and Sarah was 39. Their four children were Herman, who was 11, Catherine, age 10, Boyd, age 7, and Paul was just 5. Every Sunday afternoon, the family would visit J.B.'s parents in town, and Sunday, June 9th, was no different than usual except that everyone was excited about the Children's Day service at church that night. Sarah Moore had planned the festivities, and some of the children were participating. And Catherine's friends, sisters Lena Stillinger, age 12, and Ina, who was 8, were coming after the program for a sleepover. The Stillingers lived two and a half miles from the church, and the girls were afraid to walk all that way home in the dark. The church was full, and the program was reportedly enjoyed by all. Afterwards, the Moore family and the girls walked home, arriving between 9.45 and 10 p.m. The next morning, the Moore's neighbor, Mary Peckham, noticed that something didn't seem right. The Moores were always punctual about their chores, but not on this Monday morning. The yard was empty and the house was quiet. All the curtains were closed, too. Concerned, Mrs. Peckham knocked on the door. There was no answer. Now worried, she tried the doorknob. It was locked. She decided to call J.B.'s brother, Ross Moore, who came right away and tried knocking and yelling with the same result. Ross had a key and entered the house. He never got farther than the front parlor, coming right back out in a hurry and telling Mrs. Peckham to call the marshal. J.B. and Sarah Moore were found in the master bedroom upstairs. They had been bludgeoned to death, their faces destroyed and skulls crushed. Herman, Catherine, Boyd, and Paul were found in the upstairs bedrooms, all bludgeoned in the head, too. And down on the main floor in the guest room, Ina and Lena Stillinger had been bludgeoned as well. An axe belonging to JB was reportedly found in the guest room. Even though it looked like someone had tried to wipe it off, it was still covered in blood. Word spread like wildfire in the small town, and people came to see what was happening and more than 100 went through the house to have a look. Many reports say the murder weapon, J.B.'s bloody axe, was picked up and moved several times by several different people. Finally, around noon, the Villisca National Guard was called to block off the scene so the investigators could do their work. It was determined that the murders happened between midnight and 5 a.m. J.B. and Sarah were attacked first while they were sleeping. The attack on J.B. was so vicious that there were gouges in the ceiling from the axe being swung. His face was so obliterated that his eyes were reportedly gone. Sarah had been attacked with the blade of the axe. Everyone else in the house was attacked with the blunt side of the axe. The Moore children were murdered next, and all of them seemed to be asleep when the attacks happened as well. Reports state the killer or killers returned to inflict more damage on the faces of J.B. and Sarah 
after the children were killed and before Lena and Ina were murdered downstairs. Lena Stillinger may have been awake when the attack came. She had a cut on her arm that may have been a defensive wound. Since Lena was found lying across the bed in her nightgown pulled up, it was feared she had been assaulted as well. Later examinations would show she was not molested and that all the injuries on the victims except Lena's arms were inflicted on their heads. All the victims' faces were covered with clothing or other cloth, and the bed linens pulled up to cover them after the murders, and the curtains had all been closed. Windows without curtains were covered with clothing. Many reports say that every mirror in every bedroom was covered with cloth as well. A pan of bloody water was found in the kitchen. There was a plate of uneaten food on the table, and many reports say a slab of raw bacon was found on the floor next to the axe. Some reports say cigarette butts were found in the attic, while others say there were no cigarettes found. As you can probably imagine, the town of Villisca was in chaos. Groups of men from town searched everywhere they thought a killer might hide. They found nothing. And as night fell, fear grew. Reports say every lock in town was quickly sold, and armed men patrolled at night. And folks started to talk about who could have killed a family that everybody liked. One of the first suspects was Frank F. Jones, J.B. Moore's former boss and Iowa State Senator. Everyone knew Jones was extremely upset when J.B. left his store and took up the lucrative John Deere dealership with him. There were rumors that J.B. had an affair with Jones's daughter-in-law as well, although everyone involved denied it. Folks in Villisca were certain that Frank and his son Albert hired someone to kill the family, but nothing could be proven, and they were never arrested. Many believed the man they hired was Blackie Mansfield, and they used their position to cover up their and his involvement. William Blackie Mansfield was arrested in 1916 and accused of the Villisca murders. Just two years after the Moore family was murdered, Mansfield was accused of killing his own wife, child, and in-laws with an axe. Due to lack of evidence in that case, he was not convicted. A Villisca grand jury released Mansfield after payroll records proved he was not in Villisca on June 9, 1912. The strangest suspect may have been Reverend George Kelly, a traveling preacher who participated in the Children's Day service June 9th and left early the next morning. He was known as quite an odd person, but everyone thought he was harmless until the murders. Investigations showed he had placed ads in newspaper asking girls to pose nude for him and was seen peeping in windows in several towns where he preached. He was arrested two years after the murders for sending obscene materials through the mail. Kelly wrote long, detailed letters about the murders to investigators, and even sent some to family members of the victims. He was arrested for the Villisca murders in 1917, and after many hours of questioning, he confessed. He would later withdraw that confession. He went on trial twice for the murders, with the first jury deadlocked at 11 for acquittal and one guilty vote. The second trial acquitted Kelly. Reports say folks in the area thought Senator Frank Jones was pulling strings to get Kelly convicted. There were other suspects and the police continued to pursue leads until sometime in 1917, but no one was ever convicted of the Velisca murders and the case remains unsolved to this day. The house at 508 Second Avenue went through several owners over the years and was eventually purchased by a couple that restored it. In 1998, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places. The Villisca Murder House is open for tours and overnight stays, and it is listed in the 10 most haunted places in America, with visitors reporting shadow figures, the sounds of children crying, banging noises, and furniture moving. The Travel Channel's Ghost Adventures crew show investigated the house and claims to have a recording of a man's voice saying, I killed six kids. Let us know what you think about the Velisca murders case in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, here's another Dragon Den video you might like. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. 
and you can hit the notification bell if you'd like to know when our videos come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.